And then the next curve that we are going to graph is the average total cost curve. So we're going to continue to do the same thing. and connect the dots again and label it as average total cost. And if you remember from looking at the graphs in the notes that your average total cost and average variable cost curve are supposed to be getting closer and closer together. And the difference between the two, so this area all the way in here, is what we call your average fixed cost. So then after that we can now graph our marginal cost curve and we're going to continue to do the same thing, only remember that it's occurring kind of between 0 and 72 and 72 and 48, so it'll help your graph a little bit if we start our dots in between these two points. Go ahead and fill this one in with a red pen so we can see the difference there. This is what we call our marginal cost curve. And we know we did that right because it's supposed to be kind of in this J shape. And then the last one on there is our marginal revenue. And you'll notice on here that marginal revenue doesn't change. It's going to be 68 every single time. So that means that that's the easiest one to graph, and it's going to be a straight line. So somewhere where you think 68 is, draw yourself a fairly straight line. <laughs> Apparently, Ms. Shap can't draw straight lines, but fairly straight line, and label that as your marginal revenue. Now, your output decision rule states that you are going to pick for, to produce where marginal cost crosses marginal revenue. So where these two curves cross each other, you would draw a dotted line down, and this is pretty much what you would pick to be your output. And if you look over here, you can figure out that same thing, because you'll see that 68 falls between 65 and 71. And so if we kind of move over there, we'll see that it lands on 420 as our output per hundred weight of beef.